Torino FC and Manchester United are two clubs with many things in common. Both play in a shade of red, and are also both currently seething with jealousy at the recent success of their city rivals. But their key similarity lies in similar tragedies that damaged the respective clubs. Both Torino FC and Manchester United had golden generations of players that came to a sudden end due to a tragic plane crash. But the key difference between the two clubs is that the Red Devils recovered from the air disaster and rebuilt to have incredible levels of success. Torino, however, were not able to do the same. This is the story of the rise and fall of Grande Torino. Torino FC were founded as Football Club Torino in 1906. They were founded by Swiss entrepreneur Alfred Dick. Dick had served as president of Juventus from 1905 to 1906. However, he was ousted as president by the board of directors and left the club. Dick led a group of fellow Juventus dissidents in merging football clubs Torinese and Internazionale Torino to create Football Club Torino. The club played their first ever match against Pro Vercelli, defeating them by three goals to one. Whilst Torino were denied their first top flight title in 1915 due to World War I, they eventually won their first Scudetto in 1924. They also won their first Coppa Italia title in 1936, with a 5-1 win over Alessandria. But their golden era began in the year of 1939, where industrialist and lifelong fan Ferruccio Novo became president of the club. Nova had played for Torino in the 1910s, and upon assuming the role of president, he decided to reorganise the club. He surrounded himself with a number of former players, including former Torino players Antonio Gianni and Mario Speroni. Hungarian trainer Erno Egri Erbstein had taken charge of Il Toro for the 1938-1939 season, and the team finished in second place, only four points behind champions Bologna. Novo aimed to capitalise on Torino's promising finish by recruiting players that would suit his system. Unfortunately, manager Erbstein was a wanted man. During World War II, Italian dictator Benito Mussolini enforced the Manifesto of Race. This stripped Jewish citizens such as Erbstein of the right to work. Erbstein continued to offer advice to Torino through an unofficial role to work around these restrictions, but sadly, he was forced to flee to his native Hungary. He later ended up in a concentration camp near Budapest. Fortunately, in 1944, Erbstein, along with future Benfica coach Bella Gutmann, escaped the camp, narrowly avoiding being sent to Auschwitz, and returned to the club as a trainer after the conclusion of the war. Torino this time would not miss out on the title due to the World War. When Italy entered the war in 1940, Mussolini was confident the war would be over quickly, so the players for the top teams were allowed to remain at home. Torino finished the 1939-1940 season in 5th place, before 7th place finish in 1940-1941. In the latter season, Novo's first signing, Franco Osola, scored 14 goals in 22 games, however it was still not enough for success. Torino renovated for the 1941-1942 season, with two players in Oberdan Ucello and Raffalone retiring in the summer, five new players were brought in. 1938 World Cup winner Pietro Ferraris was purchased from Ambra Senior, with Torino paying 250,000 libra for the left winger. Fellow winger Romeo Menti was purchased from Florentina, whilst Alfredo Badoria, Feliz Borrell, and Guglielmo Gabetto were signed from city rivals Juventus. Centre forward Feliz Borrell also helped the side turn by suggesting the side deploy a WM formation, a tactic commonly associated with legendary Arsenal and Huddersfield manager Herbert Chapman. This was a system that relied on midfielders joining the attack and leaving the opposition defence facing seven attackers. With Italian football to this day being extremely defensively based, many teams struggled to cope with this new tactic. In the 1941-1942 season, Torino were much improved, however they still felt agonisingly sure. Roma won their first ever Scudetto, with Torino surrendering the title when they lost against Venezia, with only three games left. They also went out of the Coppa Italia at the first round. However, the next season, things finally clicked, and it was the players that cost Torino the title the season before that would help them win it next season. Nova felt the team was missing two players from its system, a playmaker and a fast winger. He identified Venezia players Ezio Loic and Valentino Mazzola 
as the men to fill these gaps. After Torino's defeat to Venezia, Ferruccio Nova was reported to have gone into the Venezia locker room and signed the two players for Torino there and then. The pair arrived and had a huge impact on the team. Lewick played as what many would describe as a box-to-box midfielder, using his seemingly unlimited amounts of energy to turn defences into attack. Mazzola was installed as captain, and the two helped form a lethal attack alongside centre-forward Guglielmo Gabetto. Torino, under the management of Andras Kutik, won their second Scudetto in 1943, finishing one point ahead of Livorno to capture the title. They also exacted perfect revenge on Venezia for the defeat the season before. In the Coppa Italia final, Torino faced Venezia in Milan. A brace from striker Guglielmo Gabetto, along with goals from Ferraris and captain Mazzola, saw Torino become the first ever Italian side to achieve the League and Cup double. After this success, however, the Italian League was put on hold due to the war, as was the Coppa Italia, which would not return until 1958. The league returned for the 1945-1946 season, however the system was reformatted, with the league split into north and south sections. The top teams from the two divisions would go into a final table of eight teams, with the team finishing at the top being declared the Scudetto winner. Ferruccio Nova prepared Torino for this new season by signing six players, with former Torino winger Luigi Ferrero as manager. Things did not start well, with Torino losing their first game, however they soon recovered, scoring 11 goals within their next two games, beginning the charge for the rest of the season. Torino finished the campaign in incredible style. They defeated Napoli by seven goals to one, scored six goals in the first half hour against Roma, and settled the Scudetto on the last day by beating Pro Livorno 9-1. Gabetto finished as top scorer with 22 goals. As Erno Egri Erbstein returned to Torino as a technical director, and the league returned to the normal system for the 1946-1947 season, Torino could not be stopped. They finished top, 10 points ahead of Juventus, and did so in tremendous style. Their campaign included a 16-game unbeaten run, and they scored 104 goals over the course of the season. Captain Valentino Mazzola was the league's top scorer with 29 goals. Torino retained the title again for the 1947-1948 season, winning by 16 points, and continuing to dazzle by going 21 games unbeaten, scoring the highest number of goals with 125, and conceding the fewest with 33. They also defeated Alessandria by 10 goals to nil, which to this day remains an Italian top flight record. Torino went on to win their fifth title in a row in 1949, under the joint management of Leslie Livezelli and Erno Egri Erbstein, but it is not in the manner they ever would have wanted. By this point, hopes for all of Italian football were high. In 1950, the World Cup would be returning after 12 years off, and there were high hopes that Italy would claim their third crown. In 1947, Italy beat Hungary 3-2, and 10 members of the starting lineup were Torino players. Torino were keen to capitalise on this. They arranged the friendly against Portuguese side Benfica, and travelled to Lisbon to play the fixture. At the time, Torino were four points clear at the top of the table, with only four matches remaining. Torino lost the friendly 4-3. Whilst the result was a disappointment, the Torino players stepped on the flight home in the knowledge that they were on the verge of securing their fifth straight title. Unfortunately, nobody on the plane knew that these players had kicked a ball for the final time. The flight home took off from Lisbon on the morning of the 4th of May 1949. The flight landed in Barcelona to refuel, and the Torino players shared lunch with the players from AC Milan, who themselves won their way to a match against Real Madrid. Afterwards, the Torino players reboarded their plane to finish their journey home. The plane flew into the Turin skies amongst poor weather, with the report from the ground communicated to the pilots stating that clouds were touching the ground, the wind was heavy, and visibility was poor. The plane had aligned itself for landing and commenced its descent. However, due to the poor visibility and the gust of winds, the plane was blown off course. It is believed that the pilot of the plane assumed he was clear of a nearby embankment due to the poor weather and an equipment malfunction. At 17.03 hours, the plane crashed into the embankment of the Basilica of Supiga at a speed of 110 miles an hour. Of the 31 people on the plane, which included 18 Torino players, three coaching staff, including Erbstein, and three club officials, there were no survivors.
Ferruccio Nova was not on the flight, missing the trip to Portugal due to a bout of influenza. Defendo Soro Toma also did not travel due to injury, and was reportedly mobbed by devastated fans in the streets of Turin. Toma described himself as someone condemned to survive whilst my brothers perished. Torino were able to honour the victims of the crash by settling their fifth straight title, with their remaining four fixtures played out using the side's reserves. Whilst the side were declared Scudetto champions immediately after the disaster, Torino opted to win the title themselves with the reserve team, and their oppositions also fielded their own reserve teams in these fixtures, out of respect. The next season, each team was requested to donate one of their players to Torino to help them rebuild from the disaster. The funeral procession for the players is reported to have attracted between half a million and a million spectators in the streets of Turin. Torino never truly recovered from the disaster, they have only won the Scudetto once more, doing so in 1976, whilst also winning three more Coppa Italias and having the odd venture into Europe. The club has never come close to emulating the success it saw in the 1940s, and with the lion's share of recent success going to their neighbours Juventus, many wonder if Turin will ever shine maroon again. Every year, on the 4th of May, Torino fans and players alike will gather at Turin Cathedral as the Mass is held in honour of Grande Torino. After the Mass, the current captain of Torino will stand in the streets and read out the names of all of those who perished in the Subaga air disaster. Whilst Torino never truly recovered from this tragedy, this yearly tradition shows that the Grande Torino's remarkable achievements will never be forgotten.